you're about to vote. Now you're wondering, who do I vote for? Kamala or Trump? Kamala, she seems cool. Trump, maybe he seems cruel. Who do I vote for? Now, what really matters is to understand the soul of something. You know, if I say, hey, I want to go to this doctor or that doctor. That doctor seems cool. The other one maybe seems cruel. But the question is not who's cool and who's cruel on the outside. The question is who's cool and who's cool on the inside. Who actually cares and who cares about themselves. Now, a psychiatrist told me this whole field of psychology. It says that what people do is they vote in their ego. We all have an ego. And so we look at a person that kind of is egotistical, and we say, wow, let's go for that guy. Now, if you're a Jew and you vote for Kamala Harris, you're basically as evil, I shouldn't say as evil, that's not a fair thing to say, as, as naive and as stupid as the Jews who voted for Hitler. Now, I actually met a guy, he came to my synagogue, and he said that his grandfather was one of the nine the Reichstag, the German parliament, that voted Hitler in. Without nine Jews, millions of Jews wouldn't have been murdered. Fifty million people wouldn't have been murdered. Without, you know, Karl Marx and people that supported communism. I'm not saying that the Jews were the actual factor, but without the Jews that did it, they certainly helped. hundred million people would be alive today, including three of my great-grandparents. So being a Jew doesn't give you the right to make always good decisions. Throughout Jewish history, we've been plagued by Jewish people that have an inferiority complex. And they look at the majority, whether it was the Roman Empire, and they say, wow, they look so big and I'm so small. And they fall for the classic stupidity of saying the bigger, the thing that looks better is better. Well, here's the truth. When it comes to the definition of good and evil, the easiest way to see if somebody's good and evil is do they support the Jewish people? Because ostensibly, the Jewish people are the kindest people that ever lived. We give the most charity and the numbers back this out. When people are anti-Israel, as Martin Luther King said, that's blatant anti-Semitism because the Jews have a right to a country of their own. That's all they want, to live in peace. There is no such thing as a Palestinian. If you read Ian Pasipo, the top Soviet general that defected to the West, he actually trained Arafat, who's part of the Muslim Brotherhood, and they are the largest terrorist organization, according to Egyptian newspapers that basically have been dealing with them since their founding in the 1920s in Egypt, say that Obama was part of the Muslim Brotherhood, and he certainly put them in, he certainly did everything in his power to support radical Islam. You know, people that are helping Iran get a nuclear weapon, the radical Muslim state that believes that when the world will be up to a horse's knee in blood, and they're working actively to do that, the role of the government, the sole role of the government, is to keep you safe. So to elect people that are anti-Bibi Netanyahu, who just wants to keep his people safe, pro the terrorists that want to kill Jews. And if you think that it remains in Israel, look at what's happening in the streets of America. Because basically it's anti-Semitism. And anti-Semitism has been sanctioned at the top. So it used to be a fringe, but then he who must never be named became president. He openly defied and went against Israel. It became mainstream. The Democratic Party is the party that will allow the nuclear holocaust. Do not make a mistake. This will happen. Now, I'm not saying that the Republican Party will keep you safe. The fact of the matter was that Trump was president for four years, and others were, and they did nothing to get rid of the nuclear bombs. To their credit, they at least recognized the threat. See, the Republicans have an ability to see danger. Democrats, on the contrary, invite danger. Do you feel safe? Do you feel that you can trust Iran? 
Do you feel as a Jew that the campuses are safe, that Israel is safe? Do you feel the Democratic Party cares about your safety? Because here's the fact. You can vote for Hitler because you might think he's better for the economy or something. But Hitler isn't voting for you. The Democratic Party is basically the party of expediency, it's the party that sanctions slavery. It's like the fat cat. It just does everything to get more money in its bank account. That's all it cares about. And so it's a mistake to think that they're the compassionate party. The Republican Party is based on values. Now, of course, it's not uniform. The values are a little bit different here and there. But the fundamental thing that brings, and it's interesting, Pew has a massive poll, which shows the Democratic Party effectively is like Obama's cult, whatever he thinks they think. People were looking, including many Jews, for a Messiah figure. And he stepped in in a narcissistic, demagogue way, saying, I am he. The Republican Party is definitely a little bit more divided. But the one thing that it has in common is some core values, such as freedom, such as capitalism, such as that Jewish people deserve to exist. And it's also able to recognize danger much quicker. It's not burying its head in the sand waiting for somebody to chop it off. So if what I'm saying is true, please excuse the graphics. Send this out to everybody you know. Because it looks like Camilla will win, which literally will mean, and as a Jew, I say this, we've been through 4,000 years of experience. It means that Iran, which lied, so Obama made a deal with Iran, Bibi Netanyahu was saying, do not make this deal. They are lying. And they're openly saying that they made nuclear weapons. So who was right and who was wrong? See, the guy that looks cruel is actually cruel. The guy that looks cruel is actually cruel. Don't confuse it.